Now I'm excited to kick off this tutorial series to get more 3D content on the web. We're going to keep it simple. Everything's built on free software and I bet you it's a lot easier than you think. This is just an introductory video to go over what Web 3D is, what tools are out there, and a few other background things so that in the next video we can just jump straight into getting things done. So we can't talk about Web 3D for very long without talking about 3JS. 3GS is a core technology that a lot of your 3D web projects are built on top of, including what we're going to be looking at later. If you come to their examples page, you're going to find a lot of stuff that's uh, really neat, inspirational. A lot of this stuff is even entire products built on top of it. Just whole new worlds to get into. Here's something that's kind of like a geometry nodes in Blender that uses all 3JS to build out crazy things in Web 3D. Spline is one that we're going to talk about later. That is, you can see they've got a 3D interactive thing as their website, as they should. And they've got an entire web interface to do Web 3D stuff. And you can import some Blender objects into it. It's collaborative. It's all, all pretty cool. You could sit here and explore this for a while. I know I have. I really find a lot of these things pretty cool. 3JS is a little complicated. While it does some of the coolest things, if you look at the code to do it, it's, um, it's a little more than you should have to do current day. When you do get into some of these things, it's a little simpler to do thanks to another library. So that other library is called React 3 Fiber. The name may not make a lot of sense, if you're not familiar with web development, but it's built on top of React, which is a, a web development technology, and we'll get into that a little later. And then it uses 3JS. Just like 3JS, it has a bunch of examples, shows you how to do them. They might look just as confusing, but everything is wrapped into components, and these components have their properties, and it's a little easier to access compared to 3JS by itself. I think they did a, a really good job of putting everything into the code sandboxes and I haven't seen nearly as much fanfare about this framework as I think it deserves for how much it advances Web 3D capabilities and, and people being able to get into it. So hopefully this tutorial series will give us or give this more of the attention it deserves and get some more people onto it. I realized when I was showing the React 3 Fiber examples, it might have been more intimidating than it should have been because you see all the code on the screen, you don't understand what any of it means. And I wanted to show that look, all of this code is generated based on a single command. We can bring in a Blender file and run one command, and it's going to take all of your objects and automatically create them for you in this thing, including your lights your camera, some animation paths. Um, this is all done with one command and we will show how to bring that all together and get your stuff published on the web. So you don't have to know what all these things are or you know why they're done certain ways. It'll get started for you and you can start tinkering with it and I guarantee you if you can do web development or you can do Blender content, you can definitely take this on and learn it and it's not that bad. So we're going to go over the way to do everything from a developer perspective that is free and flexible and gets to infinite levels of complexity based on what you want to accomplish. You're not limited by anybody's framework or limitations on what they thought that people might want to accomplish. It's only limited in what you can learn and what you're going to apply. But if you want something even simpler or you just want to throw things together and you don't mind doing a paid product, I'm going to go over a couple things here that you might want to check out and we'll get those out of the way and acknowledge that they exist before moving on to the whole do-it-yourself approach for free. So the first one I'm going to mention is Verge 3D. This is a tool that you can use with Blender or other 3D software and it has like an, has an add-on that goes in the 3D software as well as other components. Like they have a logic builder, you know, stuff like that. And it is subscription-based. 
I haven't tried it myself just because I've been developing for a long time and I, I usually don't like these type of things, but developing is, is definitely way too intimidating for you still, then I would recommend at least giving them a try. One thing I will say is that these Blockly logic blocks are very similar to programming. They just, they just take away some of the syntax, right? So if you can learn this, you can learn programming. It's the same thing, just the syntax is different. The other one to mention is Spline. So I've actually seen some pretty cool things in this. I did try it out. It's neat that you have real-time collaboration. It's on the web and you can import your 3D models and, and start messing with them. And, you know, from what I can tell, you are somewhat constrained to an application. So you deploy to the web or you deploy to an app or, you know, things of that nature. And this might also be one to check out. But it does look like at some point there, you get to the point where you need to do or understand some web development. So it might just be, you know, delaying how much you need and need to uh, learn when. Something else that's out there that you might want to try out that's an existing product. Now that we got those out of the way, we can talk about doing stuff on your own. Let's talk about what's going to be in this tutorial series. In the beginning videos, we're going to have two different, two different starting points. We have the starting point from the perspective of people who know Blender and want to publish their stuff to the web. And we have the perspective of web developers who want to include some 3D content. Once we get past those, we're all going to be on the same path and talking about ways to work with what we've created, no matter which direction we came from. And then when we get into the advanced series, that will be how to do a little more complex things, how to think about how to do something a little better starting from the beginning and, you know, have a workflow between all the way from Blender to publishing and, you know, doing things smarter end to end for the process and, you know, getting into a little more programming and, and concepts. I hope to also see you in the three dialogue discord where we can discuss the tutorials and anything else related to web 3d and web 3d development. The more participation I can get, the more motivated I am to add more videos, blender add-ons and develop scripts to help everybody.